I have a story to tell, and the story is about you. You, sitting here in this club, cradling a drink in your hand, at ease and enjoying the acts, chatting perhaps with a new acquaintance, or perhaps noticing someone across the room who looks enticing. All the while unaware that you are in the midst of legends and spirits becoming woven into the tapestry the moment you all set foot into that door. For here in this traveling cabaret, you too have a role to play. Here, where the realm of dreams and story intersect, you are the protagonist. And yet, you do not realize it yet, but you will. You sit there. Listening to the words of the beguiling and eloquent woman on the stage, smiling to your table companions, at ease in the knowledge that all of this is just a memory in the making. And you think to yourself, the poem, it was cute, clever. It strikes you as something you possibly could have written yourself, maybe a little better, but fun. The acts have been good so far, and you're wondering to yourself, what is next? You're pleased that you were able to make a couple of florins under the table, perhaps even going by the game station, and you're here to enjoy yourself, and then take your leave. No commitments. No one ever intends to commit, after all. And yet, you have already set events into motion. Did you say please before you opened the latch? There was one who needed help. Did you give it? There was one who had a secret to keep. Did you provide a safe place for it? You'll finish the night, bid farewell to people that you spoke with, and you'll cross the threshold of that very special door. Smelling of smoke and of incense, perhaps in need of a tic-tac or a piece of gum, the cloying taste of drink still on your tongue. And you'll go leisurely walking to the vehicle that's waiting for you outside, climb inside, Check your cell phone for messages, chuckle quietly to yourself, turn on the radio and pull out onto the road. The radio will play some soft music that you really won't pay attention to, but you should. You'll drive on and on, far north into the snowlands, or perhaps just across the slim finger of a land, to the sailboat that is your hideaway home, your heart's true desire. You will drive on and on. What you won't notice, however, is the tiny slip of paper that was placed into your pocket. It'll hide itself cleverly into the crevasses of your material. Invisible, really, to clumsy fingers. You've taken something from this place you see, and it will not leave you so easily. There will be a slight sensation behind your ear, tickling, hiding itself into your hair. It'll softly chitter, greedy, and eager. And you'll pass it off as just the static or the crackle of the radio, dismissing it. You'll sweep a hand across your neck and the sensation will pass. Your little passenger waiting silently, carefully watching you. And then you'll feel a prickle between your shoulder blades. You'll glance at the rear view mirror and see a second pair of eyes staring back at you from the shadowed back seat. You'll blink and it'll be gone. Just a trick of the mind, just a play of heart. But that feeling of unease can't, won't disappear. You'll distract yourself by turning the radio up a little louder. Some DJ will chatter inanely about nothing in particular, and a new song will come on. And as you drive on, nearing your destination, you'll pass an old fueling station, fluorescent sign, dim lights, and outside of it, you'll note the woman sitting there, <coughs> flower print dress on a dirty rocking chair. She'll track you with your eyes as you drive by, and you, resolutely, will keep looking forward. After a mostly uneventful few minutes, you'll finally reach your destination at last, feeling safe, but the sky seems a little too dark. The shadows surrounding your huddled form beside the vehicle door a little too deep. Solemnly, you'll go inside your own front door, and you'll pause as you let your eyes adjust. Your pocket will suddenly buzz. Startling you. You have messages on your cell phone, two in fact. One from a relative, the other from an unknown caller. 
they went straight to voicemail. And so, you find yourself suddenly with a feeling, a lucidity. You remember the words from the woman at the club, the one who seems so ordinary, so mundane, compared to all the other interesting acts of the evening. You'll look at the phone, and you'll set it down, and you won't listen to the voicemail. There is a river that can be crossed here, and you can pick the direction. You'll head to your bedroom door, you'll lick your dry lips. You will decide to briskly go and kick off your shoes and undress. Suddenly, you need a shower, but suddenly, you don't really want one. Your clothes will hit the floor, and you won't notice the slip of paper, the color of a tea-stained napkin, with a dapple of red lipstick, slip from your pocket and touch the floor and melt unseen. As you go looking for nightwear, looking for clothing, it begins to find itself in between the foundation and the floor, like little tendrils of light coming from it, weaving rhythmically, growing larger, pulsing with each ozone breath, becoming one with the floor, then the walls, and then your home surrounding you, like a cocoon, waiting for you to fall asleep, waiting for you to fall asleep within its sphere of influence. There's a slight prick that will happen behind your ear, and you'll swat at it, finding a tiny scratch and a drop of blood. Something will fall out of your hair, and you'll shout, startled. You look for the thump that hit the ground, but you can't see it as it skitters, lightning fast out of sight. Your ear becomes hot and starts throbbing, as if the bite of whatever insect was hiding there left you with some sort of venom, or perhaps a warm poison, or perhaps an invitation. The feeling dulls, and suddenly your mind unwittingly relaxes. But you don't forget your name. You head to the bathroom, you glance in the mirror, and plainly you can see a second pair of eyes, green as emeralds and glowing like moonlight, watching and waiting. But you feel no fear. As if in a haze, you pick up the toothbrush and start brushing your teeth, at ease and trusting the figure that looks back at you who seems to know you, and who is beckoning you to return. Why don't you answer your phone now? There was a message for you, was there not? Really, it's silly not to answer a message, especially if it's meant for you, and particularly this message. And so, you move, calmly and silently, to pick up your phone. You press the button to hear the message, and you place it to your numbing ear. A voice speaks to you but you don't understand the words. But the sounds, you do understand the sounds. Like polished crystal bells, lilting, rising with a heavenly chorus. A joyous pleasure enters your scrambled brain and a siren song sings to you, beckoning you to return, promising you so many things, so many things if you just come back. The place where you are now is the place where your journey began and the place where your journey may continue. Come back, it seems. Find your place within the great device. And nodding to yourself, you set the phone down and move to your bed. The air there in your bedroom has become clammier, warmer, and the scent of ozone and perhaps the scent of vanilla is there. You pull back the sheets of your bed. You slip between the covers, unconcerned of what might still be lurking beneath your bed watching like a guardian above you as you close your eyes and smile faintly at the ceiling tendrils of something are coming down from the ceiling rhythmically spinning like a mobile in a child's cradle lulling you there is a hum coming from your walls louder as sleep sucks away at you like whispers like laughter and then sleep sucks away at you encompasses you and you dream you dream of ancient things, of a god machine, and a place where all things come and meet. A cabaret that is not a cabaret. A cat that is not a cat. And of the beings that wait for you here, knowing and amused, as you become the fertile soil for which old things grow strong and blossom, as you become yet another hapless character to fall upon the stage of the world. And there, in your dream, you can see that halfway, that gate, the doorman that waits for you and nods as you make your way forward. And you, smiling in your dream, nod back, a warmth settling in your breast, 
This is where you belong. This is your home, and we welcome you. Your foot hits the floor. You step forward, and a dream miss as the curtain falls. Good night, dear patrons. Good night, and sweet dreams.